Um, okay, so I hope it's okay that I don't talk too much. Um, I actually am around a lot of speakers all the time. I run a conference. So <laughs> um, one thing that I always like to do if there's a room of brilliant people um, and people from the community here um, is actually sort of try to flip the stage as much as possible um, and learn from you because I think, you know, I'm super thrilled at everything that's going on with the Downtown Project and thank you for all the organizers for putting this together. Um, and I think it's a it's a huge opportunity for us to really learn about what's possible here, not from you know outsiders coming in, but from um, the community itself. And so I will just share a, a little bit about this. I think the the one thing that um, one way that we might be able to help, or or from what I do and what I've learned, be able to help um, is really just to help put out some questions. Um, uh, Part of that is really because the way that um, we do the feast, we really put out the questions so that, again, you can answer because you are the ones who have the answer, particularly in a question um, like, how do you revitalize the downtown um, of Las Vegas? Uh, and this uh, whole type of talk, which will be a little more participatory in a second, um, really goes back a little bit to the fact that we've been sort of in this really big paradigm shift for quite some time moving away from a uh, much more top-down hierarchy of people pushing out content to, to consumers, people pushing out messages to consumers, and people um, doing urban planning in a way that's very top-down to a time where uh, anybody can participate, anybody can put their ideas on Indiegogo and get them funded and do them, um, propose ideas for, for things to do in a city like this. Um, and so uh, that's really, really powerful and an opportunity for everybody in this room to really start shaping um, a place like the downtown. You know, for me, I'm from New York, uh, so for my parallel um, for this top-down part is Robert Moses. Um, he designed the city in a way where that's why everything runs through Manhattan and Midtown and why there's, you know, no trains at all in uh, Queens or or Brooklyn. Um, it's really designed in a way that has separated a lot of areas. Um, and now I think you know there's a lot more sort of up and coming uh, burgeoning structures like food trucks and like people sort of you know um, moving into areas and really starting up businesses and small local businesses and small local distributed um, food production and art art spaces. And I think that's a lot like what's going on um, down here. And um, I think the, the reason that a more participatory way of, of doing something like this or a big project like this um, is because uh, the small is really beautiful. Um, there is an architect uh, named Christopher Alexander whose work um, I'm super, super fond of. Um, he talks about something called uh, patterns. Uh, he created a whole language around patterns uh, that really describes how um, individuals at every point in their day um, go about interacting with their spaces and really creating their spaces in a very organic way. It starts with really little things like um, a, a way the doorway is shaped and how you come into that doorway um, and how that leads maybe first into um, an open room and then a kitchen um, and that how that that feels right and how you can create spaces in a way that feel very organic and that let the things that you would like to see flourish and feel good about a space happen. Um, and so I think in, in, it'd be great to explore with you some, some of what those patterns are in a place like Las Vegas um, or, how, or what they could be. Um, I think there are a lot of patterns here like really big casinos, uh, like really you know, large streets that seem to separate spaces um, that are are the patterns that already exist, and what you know, I don't. I think a lot of people here would like to see something a little bit different. Um, and you know, even just being here a little bit, um, taking some runs around town, taking some tours around town, there have already. I've already seen and felt a lot of things about the city that I feel like um, I'd love to see more of. I went to a really small antique shop the other day, for example, um, and there's this woman there who's been collecting all these antiques for, I don't know, I think like 14 years. Um, and so there's this huge amalgamation of stuff um, that, that feels very Vegas. You know, it's all of these, you know, um, signs and pictures of Marilyn Monroe and, you know, things around entertainment. And it had that feel of, of the city. Um, and yet was like really beautiful and nice. And I started thinking about, you know, 
how could we allow her business to flourish and thrive more or have more businesses like hers in an area where she could get more traffic? You know, she had a Facebook page and things like that, but um, even little things like that or, or things like, you know, feeling like where there should be a greenway where people could go jogging. Um, that was just something that I really wanted. And I know, Mike, the other day, like you went to a barber shop. <laughs> that was apparently really awesome. Um, so I'm going to ask you why. <laughs> Um, so I actually would love to, at this point, again, I said I'd keep it short. Um, I'd actually love to hear from everybody here um, just what, what spaces, and if you could help describe as much as possible, um, like really feel feel good that you really love what is it about them that you love um, in particular spaces maybe that like feel very Las Vegas um, and where how might we be able to you know help people create more of those spaces or bring people people here to create spaces like that um, and then the second question is is there a space and this is really just a question because I'm really curious there seem to be so many spaces around um, is there a space where like everybody goes or you pass all the time where you think like there should be a X there, like a park there, or um, I don't know, a supermarket. It's been mentioned that like there aren't really that many supermarkets. Like you wish that somebody would build that there. Um, so that that's really, I mean, just open up for Q and A super early because um, I'd love to just sort of explore this question with you. Anybody? Yeah. Uh, Koi ponds. Where? Koi ponds. Koi ponds. Koi ponds. Do you have any like where would those live? <laughs> so if we have, they're all over there. It's, uh, in, like all the golf courses that have the water and uh, Sunset Park. Nice. Is that really far from the downtown? It's not too far, but far. Cool. That's awesome. Anybody else? I think what would be really interesting is just um, see a little more like non-consumption recreation. I think uh -huh. if I visit a town, it's always the most enjoyable seeing how people just spend their time. <coughs> it's what creates the charm. So whether or not it's like a really cheap trolley ride around like across town or tables to play, I don't know, chess near a park. Right. But it's tough because it's a desert, so if it is going to be outdoors, I assume yeah although it doesn't rain as much right so <laughs> you have that to the advantage yeah um, I think to your point I recently moved uh, from Washington DC to LA mm -hmm. and the last time I was in DC on three different um, not in the same neighborhood but three different uh, blocks I saw a big sign that said what would you like here nice and people were going in and emailing what they wanted there and my most recent trip one of those places actually has turned into that so that, that was really a cool way of that's awesome. Like people in the neighborhood asking for something to be there. Yeah. Is there any space like in the downtown that feels like a place that you could do that? Like where a whole bunch of people could weigh in on what like a giant lot could be? Oh, yeah. Six thousand empty lots. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pick? Can, you, can we just like pick one? Well, I mean, I think the the you know if you look at the downtown project and. Uh, the, um, Lots that they started developing. I mean, you, you can literally just pick one, and there's something. You know, there could be something there. Right. Uh, there's, you know, there's so many. Uh, honestly, where I think could be, come really. I mean, it's already really cool, but it could be even cooler is if you keep going now. Fremont. It's all these old hotels with amazing signs and amazing art, like weird little Motel 50s architecture and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are either out of business. Uh, and, and empty, right. or uh, you know, they're just barely scooting by as residents of motels or serving public prostitution. Right. Um, there's a lot of beautiful, you know, like just drive drive down Fremont Street at five o'clock and when the sun's low. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. And that's the thing too. It seems like there's already so much like design that's very Vegas. It's like gorgeous and beautiful. And like, is there is there anybody who's working on or a way to like sort of build on that aesthetic where you know like maybe some I don't know encouraging sort of like new shops or or there was a great project in Coney Island for example where this artist went and sort of refurbished a lot of the signs. Mm. 
um, which was a really great thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I uh, you know, have a personal connection to this because I actually moved here to the dog park. Uh, that's going to be right downtown. And it's about bringing green space and uh, a community center to downtown for people and their dogs. But there's an existing structure on the property that's from like ninth, the early 1930s. So we're going to incorporate it actually into the whole design to keep with the whole look of downtown. Mm -hmm. There's something really beautiful, like you mentioned, about some of these urban, beautiful urban pieces in this part of the city. Um, so trying to kind of create a hybrid of that, bringing some green space around it so that people can actually get up close to it and uh, get to know the history of it too. Right. And is, is there anything, like, is that a place where people, like, from the, su or not from the suburbs, but, like, from downtown already go and use a lot? Um, it is right now a asphalt lot with lots of tufts of grass and broken glass. And, uh, so not really, nothing's really being used for, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not being used for some things, but, you know, right. nothing that we necessarily Cool. <laughs> that so well that seems like a real is that a big endeavor to do? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah well I mean it's um you know it's a the space is probably about five thousand square feet and um, you know it's a lot of uh, a lot of development a lot of development to do but it's also about finding out what does the community want. Right. There's a lot of people who are down here already who have dogs and these dogs don't get the exercise they need because the closest dog park is 25 minutes away by car. Yeah. So you know, this is really about creating a space that isn't currently being used for anything and to bring some sort of use to it. Right. And I, I wonder, and I don't know, like, I mean, in, in New York, again, we have, like, lots of, we have lots of food trucks, and it's just been interesting to see how, you know, that's sort of a re relatively small replicable structure that anybody can see a food truck and make their own. And so, like, you get all of these different types of kimchi and dingle waffles and, like, <laughs> tweetable food, like, you know, tween follow. Um, and I wonder if there's, like, you know, any way to sort of bring... Um, things like that, or, or any types of you know smaller projects that lots of people can can try to do themselves. And I guess I guess in following one of the themes that's been going around tonight about telling a story, um, I'm the dog park sounds amazing, um, and congratulations on that. I think one of the things that's um, the most important and helpful to actually getting more people to participate is putting yourself out there and actually you know like if you do have an idea for a project create taking the time to make the story around it and to put it out in the world as if it's already real because then you have to do it <laughs> um, I did this, yeah, with like the conference that we do was just like we're gonna do this ridiculously huge and ambitious thing and I put it on a crowdfunding site, and then we had to have a particular date when it was going to happen because all these we told all these people that it was going to happen, and and then it it happened. And I think there's sort of like a gravity to being able to to pull people to the fact and help actually making your mind real too. Um, is there anybody else? No, we gotta finish. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's all. Thanks everybody for sharing. <laughs>